More than two years ago, we had our first taste of the new tier of raid difficulty. We got our hands on the unending coil of Bahamut Ultimate. This fight was on a level far, far beyond that of anything before or anything after it. A 20 minute gauntlet of near perfection required across every roll to clear. To this day, the unending coil has a level of mechanics not seen in any fight, even in the other ultimates. The world first teams were slow, taking 11 days of near constant raiding for the first true clear. This is compared to learning and clearing four separate savage tier fights. 40 to 50 minutes of different mechanics, taking only a day or two to clear. The absolute gulf between the two tiers was apparent from the word go, and the quality of the players capable of clearing became known too. Now, there was this rather prevalent opinion during the time. Stormblood was the first expansion that was actually really well balanced, but with some hiccups still. These hiccups were not treated very well within the community. Dark Knight became the black sheep of the tanks, seen as far weaker and to the point of being considered a handicap. If I recall, it was even doing the least damage of all the tanks at the time. Things were not good for the fledgling job. Things even got to the point that people were excluding Dark Knight from Party Finder, even for the more casual extreme fights. Similar was happening to Samurai on the DPS end, and maybe even White Mage for the healers, though that was a much closer race. They were, undisputedly, the worst of each role, and the community piled right on. Things looked bleak for the jobs, but the one I want to especially legacy focus in on is Dark Knight. See, the thing is, the reason for the intense care about Dark Knight is on the opposite end of the spectrum, Warrior. While Dark Knight was seen to be so terrible, Warrior was the antithesis, a god-killing machine excelling at every turn in DPS, utility, general survival, and general playstyle. Warrior was the golden crown on top of the king of the universe, beloved by all and credited with fast and easy clearing of content. It was only natural that when the new ultimate level of difficulty made its debut, Warrior would be guaranteed a slot to claim the gold medal. But let's go back to our world first UCOB group. Their team comp on the clear was Scholar, White Mage, Ninja, Machinist, Dragoon, Bard, Paladin, and Dark Knight. No warrior. People quickly took to this made assumptions and attempted to justify why they would ever choose Dark Knight. The job was so terrible! It must be Dark Mind. The one thing that could possibly make them choose the job was magic mitigation in a magic heavy fight. Right? When asked why he chose Dark Knight, the response was, I like playing Dark Knight. It's fun. Fun. It wasn't for being strong in progression. It wasn't for being strong against magic in a fight that is mostly physical tank busters until the last phase anyway. It was for fun. Six months later, the pattern would repeat with the Weapons Refrain Ultimate. No warrior. Dark Knight once again a feature of the World First team. 
three of the five possible world firsts for all of Stormblood ended up all being Paladin and Dark Knight. Different teams and all, and possibly different reasons for their team choices, but this is a far, far cry from the job being worthless. This is the true state of meta. The game has come a long way from its humble beginnings. Unless something major happens in future expansions to shake up the balance, the game is in such a balanced state that it does not matter. At all. Well, aside from maybe the absolute top 1%, but as we saw, even the face of God can be scratched. This trend continued a third time when going into the Epic of Alexander. Gunbreaker is a monster of a tank. Scholar has taken a dive in the eyes of many. Bard is seen as the weakest DPS of every DPS. And Black Mage? Well, Yoshi P himself at the onset of the Ultimate Difficulty said that Black Mages would need to entirely relearn the job to perform at a decent level. By now the top black mages have certainly gotten to that point, but it is in general still a high risk job to have when fighting for world first. World first team thoughts per second did not have a gunbreaker. They traded an astrologian for a scholar. Bard is actually a god in the context of this specific fight, and the most surprising, Scythia the Black Mage. One of the highest skill ceiling jobs that is certainly not at all even close to meta in a fight that is absolutely dominated by Gunbreaker, White Mage, Dragoon, Dancer, and Summoner. Three of those aren't even used. Traded for jobs that aren't even remotely considered meta in a basic sense that end up becoming gods in this fight, or remain the hostile force that is Black Mage. Now there is a big gulf between progression meta and speed meta, but Black Mage doesn't begin to factor into either of these half the time. Both Summoner and Red Mage are far superior on a progression level due to the combat raise alone. So not only is the progression spread wrong, so do they lack on the speed aspect. When you compare their comp to the current top number one on FF logs, which we'll be going to referring to a lot for the rest of this video, only half of the comp is consistent compared to thoughts per second. Paladin, Scholar, Bard, and Summoner. If the meta is supposed to be the most effective tactics available for a specific context, then only half of the world first here were the most effective choices. And yet this even gets blurry immediately upon looking at the number two. Bard is gone in exchange for a ninja and a scholar for a white mage. Go a step further into third place which is still within 4 seconds of the first place clear over a more than 15 minute fight, they bring in a warrior and a red mage. This is going to be the only time I say either of these job names for the entire video. Warrior saw a fall from grace after being shamed so heavily by Dark Knight in Stormblood, and red mage? That's progression meta not speed meta. The fact that it competes so closely to the top is impressive, even despite being in a group with one of the best red mages. I have seen the power of red mage firsthand, and yet even this surprises me. When looking even further, the only two jobs the entire top 10 worldwide uses for every single clear is summoner which 4th place even uses 2 of, and Dragoon, a job that had a rough start in A Realm Reborn, as much the game did, then has been basically meta 
ever since. During Heaven's Word and Stormblood, it had an irreplaceable synergy with ranged jobs while being a threat all on its own. This synergy was removed with Shadowbringers, and yet Dragoon is still topping charts. It's still an amazing job. This focus isn't just because of my very obvious, totally non-existent bias towards Dragoon. I have a very recent little anecdote. I'd say it fairly demonstrates the meta humper mentality pretty well. The other day someone told me that, in the game as it currently exists, Dragoon is not meta. They insisted extremely heavily, even in the face of the following facts. Quick interruption within the video. On November 29th, I discovered all of the rankings for Eden's Verse had changed. The number one spot in all four fights has become Peon Family, at least I assume that's how you pronounce it, from the Bahamut JP server. All four fights, they are number one. The earliest fight from them is October 29th, and the latest fight from them is November 23rd. However, none of these fights were on the leaderboard when I was writing the script and started all the editing and all that. This only appeared, at least on my end, on November 29th. Where did they come from? Did they just have it all hidden? Was it going through some back-end FF logs management, like vetting or something? These were not here. These are all probably legit, but these were not here. They only just appeared. And it kinda torpedoes my argument. Kind of? Only because all four times they used Samurai plus Ninja. However, the other records still stand as a comparison to each other. Until they appeared, there was a lot of representation of Dragoon. So, go under the assumption that I'm going to be going through for the rest of the video that Pion Family doesn't exist, because at the time, Pion Family did not exist. Okay, back to the video. Number one. Dragoon is just about even with Ninja and Monk at the absolute top end, even slightly surpassing in certain circumstances. Number two. The top number one speed parse of E5S is Samurai plus Dragoon. Number three, the top number one speed parse of E6S is Samurai plus Dragoon. Number four, the top number one speed parse of E7S is Samurai plus Dragoon. This was before I even looked at the top clears of the Epic of Alexander to see Dragoon is dominating. Their smoking gun that they seem to think destroyed all of this was on E8S, the top number one speed parse is... Ninja plus Samurai. Perhaps they were trying to say only Samurai is the meta melee? Neither Ninja nor Dragoon is meta. But they made no attempt to say this, only that Dragoon isn't. So I can only assume that their insistence was that Ninja plus Samurai are the melee meta, and the Dragoon is not even a factor. Which again, this really is weird when we look at Ultimate. This leads to a number of conclusions everyone should come to. Meta is not as static as people tend to think it is. If we assume Samurai Ninja is the absolute meta composition, substituting in Dragoon and seeing better results than the meta seems to indicate either the claimed meta is wrong, or it has shifted in some way. In the context of Final Fantasy XIV, meta is more a per-fight basis, so either Dragoon is just that good in these specific fight designs, or the slight altering versus Ninja means meta is so ultimately surpassed by more skilled players that skill truly is just that far more important? 
the meta gets even more muddy when we look at a fight like E7S. The top three are all within one second of each other. Fourth place is a massive eight seconds below third. This sounds so minute, but again, the top three are all within the same second, 838 and 839. All three are very different party compositions. The top one uses two gunbreakers for tanks. That's pretty on on its own because duplicate jobs tends to lose you out on some special utility and some LB generation. Second place subs in one of those gunbreakers with a paladin, and third place a dark knight instead. The healers are consistently white mage and astrologian across all three. Then the most interesting bit to me is the DPS composition. Number one is Dragoon, Samurai, Dancer, and Summoner. Second place removes both the Dragoon and the Samurai for a Ninja and a Black Mage. And then third place swaps that Black Mage out for a Monk. Looking at the top 50 breakdown, Monk is used in only 4.4% of the top 50 clears. This is between the fact that Monk is currently the least played job in the raid scene at the moment, over a thousand parses below Bard. The job people currently argue is the weakest in the game. This is more playstyle than a damage output issue though, as 5.4 is doing a Monk playstyle revamp. And yet, it is still in the top three of the world's fastest documented clears of a fight. Wait, two fights? They're third place in two fights, though this is also the one fight of the tier that Ninja plus Samurai takes a top spot and by 10 seconds. Oh man, this one fight must mean all other jobs are bad. Or perhaps this team just so happens to have an extreme expertise in this one fight. If you look at the average rankings at the top, team endgame isn't even in the top 10. My Monkey Academia doesn't break the top 10 in either of the other two fights, yet still manages a 5th place spot for their consistency. And the top 1, Blackjack, used Dragoon and Samurai in all of their best runs. So again, how much does meta actually matter. Unless you're specifically going for the top 50, top 10, or top 1 spot, no amount of insisting on one specific composition is going to get you there. Skill is, and even if you have the skill, composition isn't enough either. Other players are yet better than you, or slightly luckier with their critical hits, or just, meta doesn't mean anything! Not even the absolute top players in speed, or clear time, or anything are insisting on a singular meta. So if the top players who are better than you, strictly better than you, at clearing the hardest fights aren't universally sticking to meta, and the fastest speedrunners aren't sticking to a strict meta across the board, why is some random party finder for casual content giving one ounce of care about people using specific jobs beyond sticking to one of each job for LB generation, which can save runs, something meta itself won't do. The answer is they're an idiot. They absolutely shouldn't care. If you aren't part of the 1%, there's no reason to care. And even they are using skill first. Sorry, did I say the 1%? Sorry, the 0.04%. Yes, the top 50 groups account for only a few percent of a singular percent of the population. 
Shadowbringers reached over 1 million active characters based on unofficial census data that is prone to extreme inaccuracies that make the number smaller than what the real number is likely to be. Why are people deciding what is or isn't meta or whether a player deserves a party finder slot based entirely on job choice due to a population smaller than that of the number of billionaires there are on the planet. Personally, I think that's kind of screwed up. They might not be the top one, but every job is being used, and yet people who don't even understand what they're looking at insist they know best and are attempting to shame people for their job choices. But this isn't to entirely say meta can't be used for good or to actually tell things about the player base as a whole. Earlier I mentioned Monk specifically being disliked on a playstyle end, not the damage end. It's barely used at all in the raid scene and even many non-raiders are generally unhappy with it from what I have seen. There's plenty of people who do still like Monk, but they seem to be more a minority. Bard seems to be universally accepted to be the weakest DPS currently. Oh, but looks like it's being used far more than Machinist. And its low numbers can generally attest to it. But we must be careful not to fall into correlation equaling causation fallacies. Among the 5.4 buffs are Dragoon, which I guess Ninja is a dead job now, Red Mage, which is the absolute god of progression rating, so I don't get why they're getting buffed. Something must be in their internal data to say it needs one. Scholar, which is generally the weakest healer at the moment, but not by that much. And Bard, which got a buff last patch too. It's that last bit that justifies meta to exist on some level. Sure, they may still have internal data to look at, but at high end, raiders tend to have a better grasp on the ins and outs of their preferred jobs so they can more accurately show just how far a job can be pushed or how short it falls compared to things around it. But again, temper expectations. A job can fall short by a mere 1% and be enough to condemn it within a meta context. The fact that Bard is getting buffed a second time in a row seems to indicate that there is a deeper problem than just people not liking it or it being just barely edged out in meta. And remember, it's actually being used in some meta fights. Something that buffs the job across the entire skill curve is going to be the ideal, since the player base as a whole matters more than such a tiny fraction of a percent. But this tiny fraction can be irreversibly changed because of overbuffing. Like in Heavensward, where the perception was Bard and Machinist were not only awful to play to many people, but also the weakest. Come the creator raid tier, and the resulting buffs they received propelled them into essentially being the undisputed top two DPS across the board, at least when boosted by a Dragoon. Three of the four DPS slots permanently locked in, all because of how strong they were. The fourth locked in by Ninja over either of the Mages or Monk. And this actually was a permanent, unchanging meta. The difference between changing in any other job was just that enormous. Or this again was just the perception. World First, once again, did not take a board. Dragoon, Ninja, and Machinist remained, but instead, they had a summoner. The absolute sheer power the meta comp had was known the moment the buffs were announced. And yet, no matter their reasons, backup raises, or anything, it wasn't a perfect meta comp. They took that DPS loss because meta 
isn't so inflexible that you have to speedrun to clear, even for world first. And you don't need to speedrun to be an amazing player to begin with. So even when the meta does show something, it may not be as bad as everyone makes it out to be. And this is more often the case than not. This is the true state of meta. And this is how any beginner, mid-tier, or even high-tier player should think of meta. If swapping to a meta comp can eke out that last 1% of damage you need to clear sooner than later, fine. But you probably could have done that with your current comp too. Unless you are an absolute god, there should be little to no requirement of meta of following the meta or any such issues. A normal team comp, as far as the game is concerned, is the furthest you should take it due to the LB generation nerfs. And even the gods don't always listen to it. That's the meta for you though. Something that is sometimes flexible to the point of a comedy and always blown completely out of proportion to those who are never going to be good enough to be a top player. I am definitely not a top player. I'm good. Top 10% at my absolute best. But I'm not trying to be anything else but me. I'm here to have fun raiding. If it means we have a better push on a specific phase and ensures us a clear, I will sack my own performance to do it. If I have to push harder to clear, I'll try and find little things I can do better. And I'm sure never going to exclude people for wanting to play their favorite job. This was less a video to be made as a guide, and more a video I made out of passion. The level of hyperbole I've seen and dealt with over the last five years... It's annoying. I can't say I am completely innocent on that end either, but the difference is I am willing to be wrong, and the rest of them... They're never gonna be convinced. I was willing to change and realize how wrong it was to be at all concerned about meta, especially as a player who can't properly act on it. Things are put into such a lazy focus when you realize how ridiculous it was that everyone was so down on Dark Knight. But when it proves them all wrong, everyone else being meta or Dark Mind justifies the presence of a quote unquote, literally worthless job. The level people hated it was far beyond justification. I can't imagine how far they would have bent over backwards to defend bringing Samurai. Oh, poor Samurai. Some amazing players who deserved better than what they got from idiots who didn't know what they were talking about. Meta is a cancer and you should just ignore it. But thank you for listening to my rant, and my plea for all of you to do better. Better than those who would exclude without any attempt to gauge skill, and possibly even see you're in the presence of royalty, so to speak. Monk is about to change in a few days. We're more than halfway through Shadowbringers, and are ramping up to the FanFest season, even if it's a digital-only event. So we're going to see new jobs, and soon, current job changes that only a level cap increase could bring. This is going to mean a new meta, and new meta problems. Problems that are going to be far worse in concept than they actually are. Blame the player, not the job. And take care. May the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. Extra special thanks to all of my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra, extra special thanks to... Jamie Cotterell, Kathy Nock, Lemon, Meowfie, and Nick. If you would like to support me, the link is down in the description. 
Thanks for watching.